true. This isn't a showbiz story. There's only ever been one person considered for Sherlock Holmes in this part. We, um, we got, uh, Sue and I were watching Atonement, knowing we we're looking for a Sherlock Holmes, and, uh, and there was uh, Benedict doing what he did in those days, playing, the, playing the, the, the creepy villain. And we just thought, oh, he could be a Sherlock Holmes. Uh, we mentioned it to Mark. because I didn't know much at all about Sherlock Holmes, yeah. so you described to me mm. yeah. the ideal, you know, tall, thin, angular, yeah, well, big nose. With an impressive nose, <laughs> yeah, and, and sort, of, sort of aristocratic. Um, we mentioned that to Mark, who actually knew him, and he thought that was a good idea. We, we got Benedict in, taped him in Beryl's flat, uh, and sent it to the BBC and said, look, there is really no point in carrying on. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, I was very aware that I, I, I wouldn't necessarily be the, the first person to, that people would think of as, as Moriarty. So uh, uh, I think there's the, the job in the, the end of the first series was to, to sort of serve the script. There was this fantastic build-up to him. So I think uh, it was important that, um, because I wouldn't be obvious casting, that you don't do an obvious uh, copycat version of someone yeah. else's villain. So. Uh, I think, yeah, I wanted it to be um, maybe audacious, and it was written very audaciously and quite, quite uh, mm. uh, theatrically. Um, yeah. But uh, looking back on it now, I, I do understand. I do, I do see that people uh, thought, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know? We thought it would be like an audience of four million and, uh, and an, uh, an obscure audience from a Polish, uh, obscure award from a Polish festival or something like that. We yeah. thought it'd be that level. We didn't, it, I mean, it, and it happened so completely suddenly we barely finished the show, and it's this enormous hit, and uh, there seemed to be no intervening moment of escalation. It just happened. Well, said, we, we actually went, the sort of sense of ownership, 50 years of Doctor Who, we, we actually had after 90 minutes. Yeah. It just went right. right. But in the same sort of way, I think you, you, can't, you can't make it for anyone other than yourself. You can't, you know, just because people get across the notion that Sherlock might fall in a species of love doesn't mean you, have, you can't do it. Mm. You, um, it's, and, and, and what you're talking about is that the wonderful thing is that people are engaging with the yeah. show in so many ways. They're, they're creating their own versions, their own fictions. Yeah. They're extrapolating wildly about what might happen. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> I, for some reason, I hadn't seen it. I don't know why. So I watched it. I watched it grow. I watched the first episode and I thought, God, this is, um, this is fantastic. And there was this huge fanfare to it. And people sort of immediately, which I think is ext extraordinary about Sherlock, is that uh, very hard to do, is that people had an, an immediate affection for it. I think a yeah. show can be very popular and very, um, you know, critically very well received. But I think to have an affection for a show so early on is really extraordinary.